this time just um, just waiting on him, just asking him to uh, fill our minds with his thoughts. Um, the scripture declares that uh, those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. So I don't know how your weekend was. Maybe it was uh, you know, well rested or maybe it was just like any other day, tiring. And um, yeah, so um, you know, we could be physically, we could be fine, but uh, maybe mentally, emotionally, uh, we are weary, you know, certain things can challenge us, certain repeated um, uh, difficulties can actually make us weary. So um, scripture talks about, um, you know, in, in Isaiah, we see that uh, th those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength and they will mount up with wings like eagles, right? Uh, Isaiah 40. And those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Um, this is for each one of us. And maybe you're feeling a little weary this morning. Um, but uh, uh, let's just wait on the Lord. Let's uh, just ask him to renew our strength, right? Let's do that. And uh, uh, you, can, um, you can go ahead and maybe... Um, you know, just worship him. You can go ahead and just thank him or just be in silence in the presence of God and, um, you know, uh, have him renew your strength, right? But, the, but our focus is on him. Um, our focus is on the one who gave us this promise that uh, he will renew our strength when we wait on him. So let's, uh, let's do that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, our hearts are Lord, turned towards you, God. Hallelujah. Our hearts are yielded to you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for strengthening our walk with you, Lord. You will cause us to walk. You will cause us to run. Yes, some tasks require walking and some tasks require <clears throat> running and the urgency of it. For both, O oh God, you are sufficient. For both those things, O oh Father God, you will renew our strength. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Um, you know, I, I don't know what your environment is, you know, wherever you are, maybe you are, you are alone or maybe, you know, there are people around and uh, so you may or may not be able to do this, but I just want you to go ahead and um, and sing out in tongues, you know. Um, the Bible says that Paul, Paul writes and he says, I will pray with the Spirit, I will also sing with the Spirit. I will sing with the spirit. I will sing with the understanding. So uh, this morning, I just want you to, uh, maybe you've done this before. Maybe you do it regularly, but maybe uh, maybe for some of us, it's a first time. Um, just take a step of faith and, and sing out in, in tongues, right? And, uh, tune to whatever uh, whatever you're praying out and um, yeah, sing out in tongues. Uh, you know, when we, when we add a melody, you know, it adds that extra dimension of, um, you know, opening up certain things in our lives. Um, emotionally, uh, you know, there's, there are things that come crashing down when we add the, uh, the melody. And that's how God instituted singing. And we can sing to him, we can come before his presence with singing.
with uh, thanksgiving and uh, and so uh, this morning we're just going to come before his presence singing in tongues singing in the spirit right let's uh, let's do that we come before you, God. We come before you, God. The God of heaven and earth. The God of heaven and earth. We sing out out of the fullness of our heart. We sing out out of the overflow of our hearts. Those who are weary shall renew their strength. Those who cannot run will begin to walk again and run again. Yes, Lord, you have designed us to walk and run and soar. And you have called us to mount up with wings like eagles and soar about the storm. Because there you are, and where you are, there we will be also. Thank you, Lord. Shumo kinderere me. Hey, romo sabara madurun terere me. Shiba pa 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 pa. Robo sakirere me. Hire romo sumo terere me. Shiba re be prendere. You know, I believe that uh, the Lord is really, uh, you know, taking out. <clears throat> It's like just taking out the rough exterior of some of our souls, you know, souls meaning uh, under our feet. And, uh, you know, he's giving us a walk whereby we will be sensitive, right? Sensitive. Sometimes the souls become calloused and, and it helps in our walking. Yes, no doubt. But uh, the Lord wants us to be sensitive uh, to where we put our feet and, uh, you know, uh, really as a figure of speech to sensitive in our, be sensitive in our walking with him. Be sensitive on the kind of uh, terrain that we walk. Be sensitive to the um, to where we put our feet, and uh, you know, really, really, our choices, our decisions, um, and uh, as we walk with Him, right. So the Lord is just peeling off the rough exterior and uh, giving us uh, new sensitivity, uh, even as we walk with Him. Hallelujah! Bless your name, Lord. Bless your name, Lord. Bless your name, Lord. Bless your name, Lord. We praise you jesus we thank you thank you lord you're the living god thank you lord you've called us father god thank you you're preparing us father god thank you lord you're emptying us oh father god thank you you're filling us oh father god thank you lord you're establishing us oh father god and thank you father your lord you're refining us oh god in your fire oh god we thank you oh father you're edifying us oh god for time we thank you lord because you're building us oh god line upon line and precept upon precept oh father god we thank you oh father you're preparing us oh god for a glorious future and and a Lord, ever glorious present, oh Father God, we thank you, Lord, you, that you've given us the privilege to walk with you, Father God, to walk with you every moment, every day, Father God. What a privilege, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. We thank you. We bless your name. We bless your name. And we believe, oh Father God, even as you filled us, Lord, this morning, Father God, we don't have any reason to be weary in our spirit. We don't have any reason to be weary in our emotions, Father God. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We praise you. We come at this time into your mighty hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay. Praise the Lord. I hope you guys had a good weekend. Hope you were able to share uh, Christ with someone, encourage someone with uh, the word of the Lord. Uh, you know, encourage someone just being there with your presence, maybe someone in your family. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So uh, here we go. Um, we, um, yeah, I, I remember we were just talking about how uh, 
we can actually uh, do some kind of a research to find out how the gospel came to our you know our land our city or you know the city that you live in uh, the town that you live in right um, so i wonder how many of you were able to do that uh, if you were able to do that maybe you can just post it in the stream right um, you can post it in the stream so that all of us can read it um, I know uh, sharing would be great, but if you can post it in the stream, I know there'll be names, dates, um, and places and so on. So it'll be good for us to read it. So uh, I just want to encourage you to go ahead and post it. If you were able to do that, you know, that kind of that research over the weekend, uh, how the gospel came to your uh, your city, your town, or um, you know, village, whatever, right? Um, who brought it and how did it happen? Was it a ministry? Was it a you know, individual. So just put it in the stream. I'm, I'm sure it'll be helpful for all of us. Okay, so let's continue with. Um, yeah. Oh, good to hear that uh, Rupa revived in the spirit. Amen. Yeah. So every time you know, uh, I was just thinking this morning. Every time we feel, uh, feel, you know, it, it's, it's. Yeah, I, I know we, 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 we will feel weary in our walk with God, and uh, you know, we might feel weary because of circumstances, because of uh, challenges. And uh, the thing is to just uh, go back and get revived, uh, because uh, Bible talks about how um, uh, seasons of refreshing come from His presence, right? So, and we, uh, uh, we, we are privileged to be recipients of that refreshing. And it's our uh, it's our privilege to be revived by the Lord and uh, to be strengthened by Him, right? And to receive that joy, uh, which is really a resource of the kingdom, and He will release that into our hearts. And, uh, and the joy of the Lord is our strength. So, um, whatever be the circumstances, whatever be the mountains, we will face it with that strength. Amen. Right. Okay. So we've been uh, uh, so last class we looked at um, uh, some practical. Uh, lessons to um, doing the work of an evangelist and we finish by saying the evangelist needs to be connected to the local church be part of the body and even though the work uh, the ministry work of the evangelist would require you know covering uh, territory whether physically or you know uh, nowadays you know digitally and so on so it, it might require travel um, uh, and in most cases but um, to be connected to a local church, irrespective of that, right? Um, so that would be um, that would be uh, the scriptural thing to do because we see uh, in scripture that they were connected to a local church. They went on their missionary journeys, and uh, these were long journeys, but they came back, and uh, they would always always come back and share, and uh, the others would rejoice. The others would be praying for them as well. Um, uh, and they would rejoice having heard the good report, right? So, yeah, so let's uh, uh, remember that. <clears throat> and you, uh, maybe, you know, even as we were going through those, uh, through the work of the evangelists, and uh, maybe there was a stirring in, in uh, you know, some of our hearts. Uh, there was a stirring up saying, okay, um, uh, what you would, okay, Tayesha, um, Okay, let me just put it on the stream. I, I, I'm not sure if it's there in the stream. I'll put it on the stream so that it can be clear. And uh, so there won't be any uh, doubt, right? I'll do that after the class. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so if there was a stirring on any of you on the inside, you know, regarding the ministry of the evangelist, um, so pray along those lines and say, Lord, you make me. And uh, the beautiful thing that we see in the Gospels is that uh, this making happens as we follow. And as we follow the Lord, there is the making uh, that is happening. So the Lord says, um, you know, follow me and I will make you. Follow me and I will make you. So this um, making, uh, Matthew 4, verse 19, follow me. Of men, so um, so yeah. The, the 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 thing is to follow him, you know, to stay connected with him, to follow him, and uh, he will make us fishers of men. He will make us into the ministers that he wants us to be, and the plan that he has for us, the calling that he has for us, as uh, a minister of God, right? So uh, specifically as an evangelist, you know, there is that making that happens in the following. Right, follow me, and I will make you. The Lord says so. Uh, let's do that. Follow him closely, mimic him, 
you know, the scripture also talks about, you know, be imitators of God. So that's the reason we are studying, you know, this is how he ministered. So let me also minister in his footsteps the same way he ministered. I want to minister the same way, right? So be imitators of God as dear children. Scripture talks about that. Okay, so today let's uh, look at the ministry gift of the teacher. Okay, so um, uh, again, we, we will study the life of the Lord Jesus and the ministry that he did as a teacher. So, so what are your thoughts about the teachers? Uh, maybe you can share about uh, you know, uh, an, a very inspiring teacher that you had maybe in school, anything that you can remember about your teachers. Um, that would be great. You know, about our earthly teachers, uh, who was it, who was your favorite, and the reason for that? Anyone? I know it was a long time ago when you were in school, but uh, your favorite teacher and why? Anyone? Pastor, good morning, yeah, everyone. Um, well, the one that stood out to me the most that, that I always wondered if she's okay was my grade two teacher. That's ages ago, mm -hmm. but she was kind and loving. I remember there was an earthquake around that time, you know, and she really mm -hmm. stood out to me, my grade two teacher. Okay. Oh, kind and loving. Okay, nice. Yeah. Anyone else? Thank you, Tayesha. Thank you. Uh, anyone else? Pastor, uh, I would uh, like to say uh, my high school, during my high school, uh, I am my principal was uh, all the uh, so uh, also class teacher uh, because uh, I mm -hmm. was uh, studied you know a convent uh, you know nuns uh, yeah, along with. Uh, 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 along with subject, uh, there was uh, always a class uh, on uh, moral values, uh, Bible principles. Uh, even though uh, he, he was very strict on uh, moral values, mm -hmm. uh, helping, uh, mm -hmm. serving uh, uh, the needy. Mm -hmm. Uh, helping the poor, uh, you you wish mm. to uh, uh, during that time uh, we used to clean uh, over here the whole campus. Uh, uh, <coughs> we to serve um, uh, nearby uh, village so that uh, I I really learned. I really uh, inspired uh, by uh, her uh, to okay. all the Mary, Mary, moral beliefs, uh, yeah, which is uh, more important. Right. Thank you, Dinesh. Thank you so much. OK. Uh, for me, uh, my school teacher, um, I remember this one particular instance when uh, she was my history teacher. Um, actually, she was a geography teacher, but for some reason she taught history. And uh, I remember she was talking about uh, you know Indian uh, Indian mythology and uh, and uh, she talked about uh, and uh, um, you know the story of Rama and Sita. Uh, I don't know if you guys uh, you know have read. So it was uh, and the way she explained it was amazing. You know, I could. I, 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 was, I wasn't there in class. I was, you know, right there. I could visualize. She was brilliant. And uh, and I remember going back very excited. Wow, you know, as if I was part of, you know, this whole scene scenario. So, uh, yeah, so I remember about, uh, I remember her. Her name was uh, Mrs. Uh, Leela Mascarenas, Mrs. Mascarenas. And then uh, we got to be friends. I used to visit her at home. And she was also a great cook. She would uh, you know, make some very nice dishes and so on. So a very huge family, Mangalorean family. Um, they had goats. And so I have really fond memories of the entire you know, household. Yes. Yeah. Chris, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, Chris. <laughs> Yeah, 
Um, I'm sorry, I'm not able to hear you, Chris. I don't know about the others. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, Chris. Chris, uh, I, I think uh, we're not able to hear because it's. Uh, I'm getting some high frequency kind of uh, sound. Not able to hear. Maybe you can put it on the chat if you don't mind. Uh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, so sorry. it was some high frequency. Like uh, I, I don't know. Uh, others, could you hear? What Chris was sharing, I don't know if it's just me. No, sorry. No, um, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, uh, yeah, it, yeah, it seemed like a like a chipmunk kind of thing. No, so maybe something to do with the uh, thing, Chris. Maybe if it's plugged in all the way in, that would help. I think. Uh, I'm not sure if it if that will solve, but yeah, you can put it in the chat. Sorry about that. Yeah. Um. Okay. Any anyone else? You know. Can you hear me now, Pastor? Uh, teachers. Yeah, yeah, now it's clear. Go ahead. Yeah, no, I was just saying that um, the my teacher, uh, the teacher I remembered uh, and, uh, who was very encouraging was my uh, fourth standard teacher. And uh, she was the one mm -hmm. who made me the class monitor. So that was my, uh, okay. my uh, the first time that I was uh, given a, uh, you know, a position of uh, responsibility. I was very proud you know, to be here. Uh, the mm. class monitor and uh, she uh, i had actually asked her if i told asked her you know i said i want to become the class monitor and she agreed so mm. um, i uh, i still remember that and uh, yeah, she was a very kind person a very uh, uh, you know uh, and a very encouraging person so uh, yes uh, right. i i remember her as as my uh, as, as actually the best teacher i, I ever had wow yeah Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Chris. Thanks for sharing that. Charles, you want to say something? Uh, thank you, Pastor. Uh, my my favorite teacher, the one that I will not forget, is Teacher Miriam. She taught me in T1C. T1C, this is a class that is below primary one. And the, we were writing in the... In, the ground and we were using the sand. sand and that's why we were writing and I had issues with uh, figure seven and figure nine and she she came and held my finger the pointer finger and showed me how to write seven because I was writing it the other way around and nine was like letter P so uh, and now after I had written all those, uh, she went and she came back and she found I had written them by myself because in the sun, you are free to erase very quickly. You can erase, you don't require anything but your fingers and your hands. So when she, when she came back and she found I had written them, she made me stand in front of other children and recognized me. He said, yes, Charles has written. I think by that time I was not even baptized. They were calling me by my name, the one you see, that long name of Ahim Sibge. And now, uh, from that day, I was made the class monitor. You don't know what it means, Charles. Oh, everything changed. I became a superstar. So, teacher Miriam, I can't forget her. Mm. Well, wow, thank you. Thanks, Charles. I know we all have fond memories, right? Yeah. So Beth, um, was not, uh, okay, saw, me through, saw you through 10th and 12th. A very gifted teacher, funny, related well with teenagers. Okay. You also had to put in the hard work. Amazing. So we all have, uh, you know, these fond memories. You know, it's, uh, it's been many years. Okay. Susan has put in uh, one more person. was a nun, strict, kind, um, Okay, daily studies, uh, corrected every error, wonderful, right? So they were really, uh, you know, if you look back, they were really uh, fathers and mothers, right? Um, they, uh, the, the kind of concern they had and the kind of 
compassion and love and uh, the way they inspired us motivated us and we were also um, you know at that stage uh, we were also young and moldable and um, uh, and uh, impressionable right and uh, and and praise god for these teachers um, yes i know it can go either ways right some uh, you i'm sure that there have been there would have been bad experiences abusive experiences and so on but praise god for these uh we, we can still remember and uh, you know and uh, and praise god for chris did you put up your hands i'm sorry um okay oh okay so okay so um so we see uh, you know teachers can actually um you know make such a lasting impression they take us from a place of ignorance right uh, from they make they take us from ignorance to knowledge and understanding right uh, from immaturity uh, to maturity right uh, you know if you as a figure of speech we can say take us from darkness to light so also the the ministry right the ministry gift of the teacher right the ministry gift of the teacher to take a person or a group uh, of people from ignorance to understanding from immaturity to maturity or it could be from a level of maturity to a even greater level of maturity uh, from darkness to light and uh, and really it is a very important um, you know as important as all the ministry gifts are and the, the holy spirit has played them I and mean, i mean the lord has placed this ministry gift in the body so that uh, the again when we look at ephesians 4 and 4 11 and 12 we see that it is for the equipping of the saint for the work of ministry right the object end objective is that uh, but in the process uh, we are we get grounded in the knowledge and the understanding of the word of god in the very character the nature of god and uh, the heart of god right so uh, it is not just the intellectual understanding but really the whole the entire thing of the character the nature of god the heart of god the power of god okay so we we see that uh, uh, the the teacher does that uh, there because of the revelation uh, because of uh, the teacher is unable to uh, the teaching gift operates in such a way where uh, there are uh, deep revelations you know they're able to receive deep revelations uh, from the spirit of god the teacher persists in going after you know asking those questions why where who when what and uh, and really engaging with god and uh, the lord leading in in this way to um, to reveal you know, to open up the mysteries, uh, to give deep uh, and wonderful revelation from the Word of God, and the teacher making it simple. You know, having the ability to communicate that. You know, uh, it, it does no good if the revelation is locked up on the inside, uh, and it it of course it helps us. You know, as an as individuals, but then if the revelation flows out in simple words, so that it um, you know the other person is also able to receive it and be grounded in it and experience the power of it, then um, then it is it is a blessing to others. Okay, Maxon has shared here. Okay, mm, interesting. Thank you, thank you, Maxon. Um, yeah, so so we see that uh, the teacher does does these things. So today we let's look at uh, the Lord Jesus, um, how he ministered as the teacher. Some of the characteristics, some of the elements of um, the teaching gift flowing through him, right, as he ministered as the teacher. So if you're following in your notes, it's chapter six and page sixteen. Um, the Lord Jesus as our example for the ministry gift. Okay. So we need to understand that, yes, the teacher has a revelation and knowledge and understanding which flows out, um, you know, that's in a, in a, in a very um, uh, natural manner, uh, but it, it's not to puff up, you know, puff us up. Uh, if, if we do that, then uh, we, are, we are kind of, 
uh, we are not really uh, following in the footsteps of the Lord Jesus. You know, if it, it does not come from a place of, you know, I know everything and I'm here to teach you something that you do not know. It doesn't come from that. It comes from a place of um, edifying the other person, to build up the other person and to also let the other person overtake and go beyond. You know, that's the heart of the teacher. Right to to overtake and go beyond the level of the the teacher, and uh, and that's the beautiful thing because uh, you know if you look at the Lord Jesus, um, John fourteen twelve he says uh, you know the, the one who uh, he who believes in me these things he will do and greater things, uh, greater things he will do also. So you know the, you see the heart of the Father, right, uh, saying that. You know, you do this and, and greater things. So there's no insecurity in in that. You know, because he's the one who's empowering and saying, "Do greater things in my name," right? So, <coughs> excuse me. So we see that. Um, so we need to just need to, you know, have have that understanding that that's the heart of the teacher. Okay. So uh, so let's look at some of the examples, some of the scriptures uh, where we see the Lord Jesus, um, where it uh, specifically mentions that the Lord Jesus taught. Okay. And Matthew 4.23, um, of course, these are in the notes, so uh, I'm just requesting you to follow that. Um, so Matthew 4.23, and Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all kinds of sicknesses and all kinds of diseases among the people. And we see several other references uh, similar to this one in the gospel of uh, Matthew. Right? Mark chapter 1, verses 21, 22. And they went into Capernaum and immediately on the Sabbath, he entered the synagogue and taught. And they were astonished at his teaching for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. So here uh, there's a comparison between the teaching of the Lord Jesus and uh, the teaching of the scribes who normally taught and uh, uh, says that they were they were astonished at his teaching. Right? Um, uh, a characteristic of his teaching. And, and similarly, we see several other references that you can go through in Mark. Okay, Luke chapter 4, verse 15, and he taught in their synagogue, being glorified by all. And verse 31, then he went to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and was teaching them on the Sabbath. So this was a regular feature of, uh, of, the, Lord, um, of the Lord's ministry, that he would uh, teach uh, from, you know, obviously the scriptures, the Old Testament, he would teach them. And uh, they were astonished as at his insight and uh, the way he taught, um, and the wisdom with which he taught, the authority with which he taught. Yeah. Um, so, if we, if we were to list down uh, the kind of um, uh, you know the, the characteristics with which he taught, okay, here are some things that uh, that are noticed in these verses, right? Um, Matthew 7 and verse 29, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Um, and uh, so the authority with which he taught, the mastery, the competence with which he taught. right? And we know that this authority came because uh, the Lord himself said, you know, what I hear the Father speak, that I speak. You know? So it comes with that authority, and out of um, uh, and out and flowing out of that place of intimacy. You know, I know that the Father has spoken, and that has given me the authority to speak this. I see the Father do, and I do this, right? So the, the authority with which He spoke, the comp and authority, authority. The word you know uh, used there talks about mastery and competence and so on. The same word exousia is used there. Uh, uh, the word that we use for, you know, a delegated authority, right? Exousia. So the authority with which he spoke, and it was not like the scribes, uh, you know, that is what uh, we see here recorded. So, which means uh, there is a comparison, and uh, and they did not uh, teach uh, with that kind of an authority that the Lord had, and which came out of intimacy. Right, and uh, so that is something that we see. The second thing we see is that um, the Lord Jesus obviously had compassion and love for the people. You know, he was moved with compassion when he saw the people were lost. 
you know, as sheep without a shepherd. We see that he was moved with compassion. He and he reached out and touched them and healed them and so on. Um, and even in his interaction with uh, you know several people, um, with the woman caught in adultery, you know, we see that uh, the kind of compassion uh, that that he had. Right, um, he says to her, uh, "Neither do I condemn you, but go and sin no more." Right, um, and uh, the kind of love and compassion that he had. So something for us to learn, something for us to understand, uh, which means that you know we can teach without love and compassion. Right, uh, we can teach. Um, I don't know, as a sense of uh, maybe a duty, as a sense of something. Um, uh, I'm just thinking about Jonah. You know, Jonah when he went and preached uh, to Nineveh. First of all, he didn't want to go. He ran away from, went in the opposite direction, and then he went there, and uh, you know, he he uh, he preached, of course, and then there was great repentance and and uh, sorrowing and fasting, and uh, but he still waited for. He sat there and he wanted to see the kind of destruction that would come upon the city. You know, uh, really, he didn't have the father's heart, God's heart, uh, as he went and you know preached. Um, so, um, when we minister, to have that love and compassion, to ask God, you know, that's something that uh, that we see in the Lord uh, Jesus in His ministry, right? The love with which He uh, uh, ministered, right? The other thing we see is that the wisdom, okay, the wisdom. Because people saw that and he said, you know, where did he get his wisdom? Matthew 13 and verse 54. When he had come to his own country, he taught them in the synagogue so that they were astonished and said, where did this man get this wisdom and these mighty works? So they saw the demonstration of power. They heard his teaching and they were astonished. They said, where did he get this wisdom? Right. And um, John chapter 7, 45 and 46 talks about the, 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 the reaction, the response of the officers who had actually come, who were sent by the chief priests and the Pharisees. You know, uh, so they came back saying, you know, no one ever spoke like this man. No one ever spoke like this man, um, which means that they were kind of they were drawn to um, the, to the content of what he was sharing, they were drawn to him as a person, and uh, they were drawn by the the wisdom uh, which characterized his teaching. And they said, "No one ever spoke like this." Right. So there was so much wisdom, um, practical wisdom coming out of his teaching, uh, which they could not refute, which they were drawn to. Okay. So I'm just, you know, when we read through all this, we see, um, you know, just uh, imagine. The, the the presence of the Lord Jesus, you know, um, is a, is is all apostle, all evangelist, all pastor, all teacher, you know, all prophet, and he is God, and this kind of ministry just flows out of him. Just imagine the, you know, the the presence of the Lord Jesus, uh, and it's it's amazing, right? Uh, um, the way just when you when you get a glimpse of his personality, when you get a glimpse of uh, how he ministered, uh, you know, we, we, we get so excited, right? Uh, and our heart is like, it was so stirred up and his presence is, is amazing, right? And uh, one day we're going to see him face to face and it's going to be amazing. Right? And that's, uh, that's uh, you know, worth looking forward to, right? Like Paul says, um, you know, it, to be absent here, to be with the Lord is better for me, right? He says, but then for the sake of others, he's like, you know, what is better for you is that I remain here and teach and so on. So uh, his presence is amazing. His presence is, um, you know, something that you cannot describe, indescribable uh, beyond words, right? Okay. So um, so we see that uh, the other thing that we see, the fourth thing that we see is that his teaching was combined with supernatural ministry. Okay, so it was not merely academic. It was uh, also not merely you know, going beyond, beyond the knowledge and um, uh, with the revelation uh, that comes from the Holy Spirit. It was, it was not just that, but also combined with the demonstration. Okay, because people said, you know, where did he find, you know, where did he get this wisdom and these mighty works? Okay, and these mighty works. So it, there was demonstration 
confirming all that he was teaching. Right? There was demonstration, and um, and that's an example for us as well. That uh, that in our teaching we can expect and receive and flow in the demonstration of the power of the Holy Spirit. Right? It could be in the gifts of the Spirit. And uh, you know, in whatever way that the Lord leads, to expect that, to grow in that, to develop ourselves in that, that we you know whether we take those steps um, and develop ourselves in that, whether in the prophetic or whether it's something to do with faith and healing or you know word of knowledge and uh, word of wisdom, that we that we develop ourselves in that and and ask God to uh, like Paul says, you know, desire spiritual gifts gifts. So. So we we desire that, um, and and not really cool down in our desire for uh, the spiritual gifts, right? Because um, that's how he ministered, and that is uh, so. We who need to walk in his footsteps, uh, we can do the same thing. And he, you know, very gave that blanket statement that those who believe in me will do these works, right? So, so praise God, we have this opportunity, we have this privilege, we have the Holy Spirit um, and who will lead us in, in such ways. Okay, so uh, another scripture is uh, Matthew 4, uh, verse 23 and 24. Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all kinds of sicknesses, all kinds of disease among the people. Um, then his fame went throughout all Syria, verse 24 says, and they brought to him all sick people who were afflicted with various diseases and torments and those who were demon possessed, epileptics and paralytics, and he healed them. So, so the thing is that, um, uh, you know, if the Lord has called some of us to be teachers, so we don't have to limit our ministry or uh, to mere words. Or understanding um, to pass on understanding and revelation, which is of course a very crucial and important aspect of the teaching ministry, but also expand and say, God, come, make it real. Let people have an encounter with the presence and the power of the Lord Jesus, with the presence and the power of the the Holy Spirit. Right, and that's a privilege. That so we are we are not only are we unlocking, you know, it, there's a certain unlocking that happens. I remember, um, you know, sitting under the teaching of uh, uh, L T J Chandran, a person by name L T J Chandran, who used to work with uh, uh, in in the Ministry of Apolog Apologetics and so on. So this is this was uh, right in my I think college days. So there was uh, unlocking happening, you know, as he was teaching and uh, as he was there was an unlocking happening, you know. So, solutions coming in and uh, you know a lot of questions questions which i had for many years answers coming in and, and it was as if these doors were being unlocked i don't know if you've had that experience you know it's, it was as if these locks were being you know opened and and uh, you know you're just being guided into a truth and greater truth and so on so um i don't remember having that kind of an unlocking experience right so there the the teaching ministry would involve that unlocking kind of experience where people are led into truth uh, and with an encounter with the person who is um, wisdom itself right and that's the that's the beautiful thing and uh, uh, prayer you know uh, an uh, encounter with the power of the lord jesus in doing those good works like in, in all the uh, whatever be the oppression of the enemy whatever be the works of the enemy whatever be the deception of the enemy right whatever be the fears and deception and lies of the enemy that the people have an encounter with the presence of Jesus people have an encounter with the power of the holy spirit and all these inroads that the enemy has made in their lives are you know are, are nullified are neutralized and that's territory taken back for the kingdom of God, right? So, so, um, so we have the privilege of doing that, right? <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry. Uh, the other thing that the Lord Jesus um, used was the use of uh, figurative language. Um, of course, he we see many other things like he quoted extensively from the Old Testament scriptures, right? And he was, of course, the eternal word, the living word, and uh, you know he was uh, in a way he was authorizing all these scriptures. Uh, he quoted extensively from that, and 
and then uh, you know he the the method uh, that he used uh, in in teaching one of the things was uh, of course parables right he used figurative language like metaphors and uh, hyperboles and parables okay so let's look at uh, uh, like uh, what are those things that he used what are those uh, tools that he used when he was uh, sharing right he used uh, metaphors uh, we see in matthew 16 and verse 11 i think uh, matthew 16 yeah matthew 16 and verse 11 um so here uh he's saying how is it that you do not understand that i did not speak to you concerning bread but to beware of the leaven of the pharisees and sadducees okay um so in verse 6 if you just back up to verse 6 um of verse 5 now when his disciples had come to the other side they had forgotten to take bread then jesus said to them take heed and beware of the leaven of the pharisees and sadducees and they reasoned among themselves saying it is because we have taken no bread you know we didn't we forgot to bring our lunch and uh, it is because of that that the lord is saying you know beware of the leaven of the uh, and then the lord goes on to explain you know do you not remember you know how there was multiplication of the loaves and the and the you know and and you had so many left over how is it that you do not understand that i did not speak to you concerning bread but to beware of the leaven of the pharisees so to beware of the influence of the leaven or the east um, of the pharisees and um, then they understood verse 12 that he did not tell them to beware of the leaven of bread but of the doctrine of the teaching of the pharisees and sadducees which could um you know uh, which could corrupt which could influence the entire batch of dough okay um and of course they they understood that because they they would have the feast of the unleavened bread right um, all the jews did that a feast of the unleavened bread where the entire household was cleansed of all uh, yeast and um, you know they would uh, and for seven five days or seven days i think they would eat uh, unleavened bread uh, from that time so uh, they understood that of course and so they knew the uh, the the effect of leaven on the on the dough and uh, and why you know leaven referring to again uh, what they were set free from the bondage of Egypt right it was so um, so they 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 understood that so here they made that connection it was about the teaching of the Pharisees and Sadducees when he said the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees so he, he used um, these metaphors which they could relate to and um, and one of the reason being that uh, they would never forget it right I'm sure every time they were eating bread they would remember the the multiplication they would uh, of the you know the supernatural power of the, the Lord um, uh, uh, the miracle that they experienced in their own hands rather and uh, the provision the heart of God to provide for their needs, and uh, and they would also understand about the leaven, about the teaching, and everything. You know, just coming together in that, <laughs> you know, you know, when you whenever they were eating a meal, probably, um, and different times, you know, all these things just coming home, you know, becoming real to them. So he used metaphors. He also used hyperboles. You know, Matthew seven, we talk about where he says, um, uh, when it comes to forgiveness and, and correcting and judging. So Matthew seven and verse three says, "How can you say to your uh, sorry? How, why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not consider the plank in your own eye?" Okay, so speck in one's eye, we can we can understand, but uh, you know there is a plank. You know, plank is of course a big wooden piece. So he's saying, how is it that um, you know you you want to correct or take out that speck, uh, that small piece from uh, your brother's eye, but behold, there is a huge wooden plank in your own eye. You know, so it was an exaggeration, a hyperbole, uh, uh, an exaggeration to to drive home the point that hey, there is something that bigger. There's a bigger issue with yourself, which is uh, actually preventing you from you know correcting the other person or setting right the other person. So there's a bigger issue that you need to deal with. Okay, so so that was the truth that he was sharing, and he used this hyperbole, uh, this exaggeration. You know, there is a plank in your eye where you're looking at the speck in the other person. So, you know, um, 
so judging unjustly right um, uh, so that is what something that we see here and of course he used parables he used parables a parable um, so we look at that when we come back from the break break we look at uh, the kind of parables that he uh, used and taught and we look at some of them okay so we'll uh, we'll take a break right now thank you